a controversial figure winning what has been one of the most divisive by-elections in recent memory. Just talk us through the night. Definitely. I mean, really quite an astounding by-election. I don't think there's any other way we can really put it. So George Galloway taking a really quite easy win in this by-election, securing pretty much double the amount of votes than the candidate who came in second place. And it's been historic for several reasons. One, because George Galloway will now be an MP, the only MP for the Workers' Party of Britain in Parliament. Two, because this will be his fourth parliamentary uh, period uh, in Parliament, having represented the Labour Party, the Respect Party, and now his new party. And secondly, also because of the candidate who came in second place. This was an independent candidate, so not affiliated to a party. And it's absolutely pretty much unheard of that this would happen, that both Labour and the Conservatives are really out of the question coming in third and fourth place. So really quite a historic by-election for several reasons. Alicia, there have been some complaints from uh, a, few of his, a few of George's rivals that it hasn't been exactly a fair and clean contest. There's been some dirty tactics involved. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Definitely. So this is mainly coming from Richard Tice, leader of Reform UK. And he has said that this whole campaign has been really quite grubby. And this isn't the first time that, that George Galloway has had an accusation like this. He won a by-election in 2012 and had the exact same accusation thrown at him uh, way back then. And what Richard Tice was referring to is... is hate speech and slurs directed at the reforms candidate Simon Danchuk, which he said was very much rallied um, because of George Galloway. Now, George Galloway has totally denied this and said that isn't true, and apparently is even threatening to release a text from Richard Tice, where he says he was actually asked to join the Reform Party not so long ago. So it will be interesting to see how that plays out later today. But we've also got to remember the role that Labour have played in this as well. Obviously, their candidate, they withdrew their support from their candidate, but too late uh, in, in the process, meaning that Azar Ali still did stand, but he obviously came quite low down in, in the pecking order when it came to the results. And lots of people also saying that that played a role in, in George Galloway's success here. Uh, we heard a short extract uh, of the speech, uh, Alicia, at the beginning of the programme, but George Galloway really uh, has it in for Keir Starmer, uh, doesn't he? Really went for him, describing him as a betrayer. He's out to cause trouble. How difficult is this going to be for Labour? Well, definitely. And you're totally right in saying that it, it was definitely very much an attack on Keir Starmer. Pretty much all of the speech was relating to the Labour leader, saying that the tectonic plates had shifted and that this signifies a big change in Britain for people who would vote Labour now wanting something different. And I think what's also really interesting is the fact that this campaign was pretty much exclusively run on the, on the conflict in, in Gaza at the moment. George Galloway, very much pro-Palestine and very anti-Israel, someone who's been accused of anti-Semitism multiple times uh, across his political career and someone who is demanding a, a permanent immediate ceasefire in Gaza and he very much just targeted Keir Starmer here saying that it shows he's a weak leader and saying that he is a betrayer and using quite threatening and vicious language towards the Labour leader here so this is definitely going to be a more than a headache for Sir Keir Starmer. Why? Because it really exacerbates current issues that are already present in the Labour Party. We've seen so many arguments, so much division uh, within the party relating to the ceasefire in Gaza and this will very much just bring those to the fore. But, Alicia, we say that it's been, uh, Gaza's been a, a big issue for them, but Galloway did campaign on some local issues. He's going to clear out the local councils, apparently. And the, the candidate who came second, David Anthony Tully, an independent local businessman involved with the local rugby club. So I feel like, actually, local issues have played a big part in the results. They, they have, but if you listen to his speech um, after he accepted this award, I mean, there were a couple of mentions about reintroducing the maternity ward to the local Rochdale Hospital, which hasn't been um, in service for a while, meaning that no one can currently be born in Rochdale. That was referenced. But really, the main crux of this was, was really about Israel Hamas, uh, and that very much came through in the speech uh, when, when George Galloway accepted his, his win in the result in the early hours of this morning and he was very much just just the target here seemed to be against the Labour Party more than it did against the Conservatives. He really just referenced Keir Starmer and said that what George Galloway's role here will be just to represent the working people. So it seems that very much this was a by-election fought on a wider political landscape more so than local issues. That's not to say that they didn't play a role whatsoever but I think normally with by-elections often we see them fought predominantly on local issues but this one was a bit different.